Hi, UEFLers. Someone asked us to review yesterday's play in Boston. Home run that's hit by Boston well beyond the foul pole in left field at Fenway. Colorado says that ball's foul. It was so far, the umpire called it fair. Replays were really inconclusive as to this. From one angle, it looked like it was a fair ball. From the other, it looked like a foul. Right now, we're looking at the camera angle up the first baseline, about halfway between home and first in the stands, where Colorado alleges that this was a foul ball. We're going to talk about the parallax effect for fair foul plays up the third of the first base line, in this case, the third base line. So we have a white dot that's all the way up on the top of that building in the background there. Uh, and that, if we move forward and back a little, we can see that that is the white ball with movement. And the question is, is this a fair or a foul ball? So we start the replay and knowing nothing really about the trajectory of the ball, we're looking at it as it's getting closer to the foul pole. And from this angle, it's gonna look like a foul ball. Now imagine that this ball, like the ball that was hit in Boston, the home run that was crushed, is actually above the height of the foul pole. So we don't have a visual reference as to fair foul other than this foul pole in the mythical distance or a little bit away from the ball itself. So it's a really difficult call to make from this camera angle. Why is it different? Because we're looking at this and we see that the ball crosses in front of that pole. But what does that mean? Well, if the ball crosses in front, that means physically the ball's closer to us than the pole, so it's a fair ball. If it crosses behind, it's vice versa, the ball's foul. But it's a difficult call when there's no foul pole for reference. Where does the ball leave the playing field? At, at the plane of the wall, where is it in relation to fair foul? If we don't have a pole on a camera angle that we can use for a concrete reference for front or behind, it's a difficult call to make. And as far as parallax is concerned, if we take this play and we go, you know, this is the up the first baseline camera angle. If we move toward home plate and we look straight up the line, we have to find where is that ball exactly. And it turns out that that ball, if you can see that, it's, it's actually to the right of the uh, stadium light stanchion there. It's to the right of that lighting tower. And if we run the play through, that ball is actually off the monster in this case, but it's fair by quite a bit. It's, it's not that close to actually uh, being a foul ball. But if we were to go, again, back over where we had the camera angle from the stands in the Boston-Colorado game in real life, uh, it, it lo and we have a ball that's leaving our field of view, going far beyond the foul pole, it's a lot keep, tougher to keep track of. And, you know, as the ball gets smaller and we see, does it go in front or behind? We can tell it goes in front, but if the pole's not there, the frame of reference for when does the ball leave the playing field is a lot tougher to tell. That's why that call stood. Whether it was fair or foul, who knows. But is if we don't have a camera angle looking straight down that third baseline, we don't have a way to zoom to see what's going on uh, from a straight view. That's where we get this whole parallax effect coming into play. And that's where we can get something that looks foul, like this ball that's actually fair in this case by quite a bit in this virtual simulation.